Uh, so some some caveats before uh, starting. Uh, I'm going to leave lots of uh, gaps, if you will, and I'm not going to fully uh, fully describe everything and uh, anything. Uh, so, uh, because we thought that that might be uh, useful for when we are doing our uh, Q and A or something like that. So. What's a cause and effect? So for us to understand a simple cause and effect, uh, if you click on, uh, if you click an icon, say for example, subscribe icon. Uh, so there are two events. One is uh, you clicking and then something happening when you click on the icon called as subscribe, right? So there are event one here and event two here. There are uh, three lines and uh, there's a, a triangle there are some ice cream and then there is a coal, right? So there is event one in the right side and even two in left side, right? or any way you look at it. So if I, if I have a connection between that is, if I click and then the subscribe button does something, if there are three lines and I sort of manipulate it to form a triangle, and I eat ice cream and I get cold, uh, this is what we call as, uh, uh, these are called as uh, event one and event two. So these are all uh, causes and these are all uh, effect, right? So one event causes another event is basically what we are talking about. Now, <clears throat> if you look into our daily life, everything is cause and effect. That's what we are all trying to do. Now, I've given you some pictures of it so you can have some understanding of what I mean by that. You can see that this is an advertisement by uh, the Patanjali idiots who, who, who tell us that if you use their toothpaste, then you get um, uh, something. And if you use other toothpaste, you'll get something else. That is, you get something bad and something good. And you can see this is a pop-up I get because I ordered a shirt once. So, they know that if I have a pop-up, the pop-up is the effect and I may click it, that is, I mean, the pop-up is the uh, causing agent. And if I click it, then they can get some uh, value out of it. So they keep on giving you a, a pop-up every time you see. You can also see that in the counter where you go and buy it, you'll have small, small items so that you can, you are sort of, uh, um, you do a, what we call as an impulse purchase. And uh, you will also see this picture, especially if you are uh, watching uh, chi chiropractic videos, the leg is short and then they do something and you get uh, the legs are in the right line. So all, every, everywhere you look into it, there is a, a cause and there is a, a effect. You cannot, um, you cannot get away from that. There is, uh, there is no way we are going to uh, overcome any of these things. So I wanted to uh, talk about uh, one of the tweets uh, one of the neurologists or somebody has put, I put his name because, of, because it's in Twitter, so it's in the public domain. So what he is describing is uh, event one, or we will call it as event, event which is the effect of it. So he's describing somebody who is having pain. Uh, you can see that there is a shooting pain in the right buttock uh, for uh, three months or something like that. And uh, the doctor, uh, the good doctor has uh, first described that. So basically what he's describing is uh, this part of it. That is this part of it. He's describing this, right? So if you are talking about a disease, mostly you are describing the effect of uh, what happens if you have a cause, right? So he is uh, basically assuming this to be a sciatica. That itself is a complicated or a problematic issue. But anyway, he has assumed it to be sciatic. Uh, I don't know why, but he has assumed it to be sciatica. And he's thinks that like any person uh, or any any animal uh, or any uh, any living organism, if you see an effect 
uh, it is natural for us to try to find out what is the uh, cause of it. Um, so we try to reverse engineer what is happening or why this happened. What the value of it is we know that evolutionarily we want to understand the, what causes an effect so that we can avoid it or we can make it better, that kind of thing. Uh, as I told you, we are living in a deterministic universe. What it means is uh, the Big Bang caused the, uh, uh, the galaxies to form and uh, the galaxies uh, formed uh, uh, smaller systems and then we had a planet, that kind of thing, right? And so there is a uh, A causes B is always there and it is always deterministic. The only thing is uh, valuable in case of biology is, as I told you earlier, we can understand what causes uh, this so that we can avoid it in, uh, avoid it in uh, later stages. And uh, to just to uh, give an uh, idea that uh, this is not just uh, uh, human beings, uh, uh, Crow has a oh, wonderful idea of cause and effect relation. You can see that uh, it knows or it has a, a understanding that if I put something um, heavier, the water will rise and uh, I can get the treat out. Uh, you can go and see this whole video. It's a, a wonderful video where you can understand that it is not just using uh, simple tools, it's using complicated tools also. So the good doctor, uh, uh, has looked into all sorts of reasons which he can think of, uh, starting from uh, slip disk to uh, trauma, that kind of uh, things. And he couldn't find any uh, reason, obvious reason. And then when he, uh, uh, when he did a proper observation and uh, assessment, I suppose, he found out that there is, uh, there was, he was always carrying a fat wallet in his pocket. Uh, so uh, he thinks that uh, this fat wallet syndrome is what is causing sciatica. And then he asked the patient to remove it and he, uh, he got it better. Um, so he's also <clears throat> uh, saying that this already has happened. That is, uh, case study in JAMA, uh, which uh, explained this. So he has used the pattern, which already somebody has uh, thought of, they have, uh, he has used it again, right? So this is basically what I mean by what we use in clinical practice to understand between the uh, cause and uh, effect, right? Now, again, uh, this video went viral and you can see that, um, uh, from this video, uh, <laughs> this man is uh, basically stopping the train. You can see that he is pulling himself and stopping the train. And also he was very happy with that idea. And then to start it again also, you can see that uh, he is uh, pushing it, right? He is trying to push it to uh, throw it on his pathway, if you will. So he has produced so much of inertia that the train is uh, moving very, very fast. Now, as we all know that this is, uh, there is no cause and effect that this guy did not, uh, uh, this guy did not cause the movement of the uh, train, right? Um, so the first thing we will try to understand is, okay, then what, what does it mean to uh, say that uh, there is a cause and effect relation, right? How will I know that there is a cause and effect relation? There are uh, many, many ideas for this, but um, uh, but I'm going to uh, talk about a few things. Uh, this will be the major part of the presentation, I suppose. Now, there are uh, the first pro point most of us understand is that two events should be related. If two events are related, there must be some relation, all right? So uh, one of the common or one of the first uh, major issues in uh, medicine was the relation between cigarette smoking and uh, uh, lung cancer, right? We know that the lung cancers were 
uh, increasing in number for people who were smoking. So there was a, a relation between these two. And also it will have a negative relation. That is people who smoke less or did not smoke have a lesser chance of getting a lung cancer. Remember, they have lesser chance, not just they don't have zero chance. So that should be a, a relation between uh, one event and another event. Without that, that cannot be a cause and effect. But it is not always true that correlation will cause uh, will lead to causation. That's what the uh, heading of our topic is. Uh, we can see there are hundreds of things which are uh, correlated, but they may not have a causal relation. Like the uh, video I showed earlier, there is no relation between this guy and the train moving. Likewise, uh, we all say that when the hen, uh, I mean, the, when the cock crows, then the sun rises. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the the rooster has a uh, some magic to bring the sunrise and things like that. So, but there should be some relation with that. And the uh, next thing is, as you know, that there should be a temporal uh, variability. That is, before you get dengue, before you should have a bite of uh, dengue carrying uh, mosquito, right? This should happen before this. That is, the effect should be, uh, I mean, the cause should be first, then you should have the effect. It cannot be the other way around. Why I am stating this is many a times we don't know whether this happened, that is one even preceded the other year. Say for example, all sorts of MRI findings in most of the conditions from uh, stomach pain to back pain, we don't know that uh, there was a temporal connection whenever we take a uh, uh, CT scan or a film because uh, we can't do time travel. And, uh, uh, that confuses us when I am thinking about uh, uh, temporal relation, right? Uh, because we can see only uh, now, we cannot see uh, earlier. It's always, this I'm talking in clinical practice, which will always confuse us. And uh, the third point is there should be a lot of uh, dose dependent relation, that is, uh, there should be a relation between uh, event A and event B, but at the same time, if I say, for example, if I do a lot of exercise, probably uh, uh, my cardiovascular events should go down. And if I do slightly once in a while, probably twice weekly or something like that, my car cardiac events may be slightly higher. So that kind of uh, dose relation should be there, right? So if I get... Uh, uh, minimal exposure to carbon dioxide. I might be okay if I have a lot of exposure to carbon dioxide, then I might have um, more respiratory illness or something like that. So that kind of relationship should be there. And this is where we all fail. I think there should be a possibility that uh, how this uh, relation is defined, that is, there is a X causes Y, right? So, uh, the uh, dengue mosquito bit me and that causes uh, dengue, right? So what is in between the mediator that is the, the larvae which is uh, inside the mosquito, which has that virus, that is uh, probably what we call as a mediator. So that is the plausibility point of it. So I have given you some examples of uh, what we think is plausible. That is, you distort the fascia, the endorphins are released by IFT, exercise reduces pain via a lot of factors, uh, variability in movements leads to self-organization. Self-organization means that the movements become more and more uh, stable. So uh, again, I'm going to uh, ask you later if uh, you think all four are true or all four are false or some of it is true or false, but you want to have this understanding that uh, these factors are vital when you are trying to uh, understand the cause and effect. And uh, I'm also going to give you another example. Uh, this is about the mask wearing. We, we were uh, kept on told that uh, if you put a mask in front of your uh, nose and mouth, it acts as a barrier to uh, all the uh, virus uh, going into the air. 
right? So that was the plausibility explanation they gave us. And uh, the last part is uh, you need to do experiments to find out whether this is happening. Even if you are not doing experiments, you want to know that this is happening again and again and again and again. That's a valuable thing to understand. Again, I want you to think why you need repeatability. Why can't you have uh, only once or twice and then be uh, sure of it? So this is what uh, the simple example uh, explanation of uh, the signs of cause and uh, effect. I will try to just uh, go through it again. The first point is two events should be uh, related. The basic relation is always correlation. Later on, you understand that A causes B rather than both of them are just uh, related. And uh, one event has to precede the other event. That is the cause should be the first, then should have the effect. It, it cannot be the other way around. And there should be a dose specificity. That is if you take a small amount of something, it, could, it should cause a small amount of effect. If you take large amount of causes, it should have large amount of effect. Most of the time it happens. It may also not always happen. And that should be some sort of theoretical understanding of why this is happening. Remember in the Crow's idea, this uh, the Crow does not need to worry about it much, but uh, in case of physiotherapy, we need to understand that, right? And we have to have repeatability in those things. Now, um, as you can imagine, whenever you are clicking this uh, in your computer or in your phone screen, uh, the effect will be nearly there all the time, right? Uh, out of, say, 100 times, 99.9 .9 times probably it will work. Sometimes it may not, but most of the time it will work. But it does not work like that. So we need to understand, can I reverse engineer? So I have given you some examples of, uh, this is called as, uh, I don't know what is this called as, Prakash, can I? have uh, uh, it's not upper cross syndrome or... upper cross syndrome and lower cross syndrome right. so i didn't uh, suddenly i forgot and uh, you can see that uh, okay the, the joints are uh, degenerated the disc is coming out uh, you can see this in the way also remember these are all in one particular time right we are seeing only now we are not seeing earlier now, so when you are explaining these things, you are explaining the effect. You are not explaining the cause. None of it is a cause. These are all effects. Now you want to reverse engineer and try to say how this happened and that leading to pain, right? So if you can do that in your practice, that is not enough, but that's the first step, right? So you want to understand that first. Now you want to see um, uh, if you are thinking that uh, this is caused by uh, poor posture, this is caused by uh, too much of walking, too much of bending, whatever you are thinking. Uh, now, this is just our uh, basic intuition, right? Basic intuition is vital in human beings. It is what has made us one of the uh, the surviving species of hundreds of humans we had or other animals we are killing uh, whatever species we can think of uh, every day. So we can have a better understanding of cause and effect. That's why we are able to uh, reproduce better and function better in this environment. But we are so poor at it because the, uh, the evolution did not uh, help us to live in uh, or understand uh, uh, e is equal to mc squared or uh, low back pain or something like that. It was not for that. So we will always have problems in that. One of the most important problems is context and complexity. Uh, com uh, complexity. What I mean, uh, complex. I mean, co uh, context is uh, the situation. The situation is very, very important when you are understanding the brain and the biology. So none of our uh, things are always happening again and again. One of the reasons is the context is different. 
And the other one is the complexity. I've just given her this for, I got this picture for heart attack and this is for the LBA, which has been published. So you can see there are hundreds of factors which are uh, sort of making what you have as uh, see as the uh, effect that is the pain and uh, reduction in quality of life. Again, the same thing for uh, obesity or heart attack. You can see this easily. You can see that uh, you will see that uh, one day they will say cholesterol is, uh, you have to take drug for cholesterol. The next day they will say that uh, we are not sure why we have to take uh, reduced cholesterol to prevent heart attack. All these things happen because they don't understand complexity or the doctors are poor at it or the scientists are poor at it or uh, we don't understand uh, context. Uh, we make uh, mistakes uh, left and right, especially in medicine, uh, because we have very, very, very poor education. One of the reasons why I think we have that is uh, if you want to understand the cause and effect, we need to uh, write a testable hypothesis and uh, try to do an experiment to show that this hypothesis is true or false. Now, if you go and read any physiotherapy book, uh, you will hardly have any testable hypotheses. If you are thinking in your clinical practice, most of your hypotheses, uh, if you are, uh, if uh, you and I are creating, um, which may be a good idea, but can I test it in my clinical practice? Very difficult. We will get into it later on and in Q&A why it cannot be. One of the reason is there are a lot of, uh, uh, context involved, there are confounding factors involved. So it's difficult to uh, prevent that. But what I would suggest if you are trying in your clinical practice is uh, what they call as counterfactual. That is, think of it like this. If you are giving a treatment and he is getting better, think like this. If I don't treat him, will he get better? If we can think like that, and say what will happen, that's a good idea, right? Many a times you can see that when you think like that, it may not be important, right? Uh, if you have any uh, problems with that uh, statement, again, we will talk about it in few years. And even if you're doing studies uh, like uh, what they have done to fix and not flex in case of systematic review and try to find out whether that causes back pain or something like that, even in a good, it's not a good study, but even if it is a published study by a white person, it is absolutely nonsensical, especially this paper is just beyond stupidity. So you can, you have to remember that one of the difficult things is to find the relation between A and B. And uh, uh, for that, the methodologies are slightly complicated. You need an intervention to prove that that is happening. So if you do none of it and you just publish like this, then a lot of people tend to uh, repeat it. And that's what made our physiotherapy a bad thing. The other episode, uh, episodic idea I want to talk about is uh, remember all treatment and the effect are basically uh, uh, cause and effect. So if you if you are uh, if you if you say that this is a good treatment, uh, especially if you understand what's the grade of recommendation, and if you know that they say that the high quality evidence that is they strongly recommend, what they mean by it is basically we have a good idea that this exercise or this treatment uh, is, effect, is effective because we understand the uh, cause and effect relation. Say for example, in OAD, we have a high quality evidence saying that, or uh, that is exercise will lead to better month in pain and in case of uh, disability also, it will get better, right? What it means is exercise, causes, exercise causes the effect of reduction in pain and disability, right? Sometimes we, we are not very sure of it. That's why we call it as moderate. That means we are still not able to clearly understand the cause and effect. Most of our physiotherapy is in this level or in this level because we are not uh, getting the, uh, we are not producing enough evidence to share, share that uh, this causes this effect. 
right? Probably another 20 years when we have a better understanding of all these things, you will have a better understanding. But sadly, even if I tell you that this is not working or this is working, Prakash also uh, did a study on this. Uh, if you go and uh, see that uh, the cause and effect is probably not true. That is stretching does not prevent uh, contractures in uh, any neurological condition. This is a well-known sort of truth, right? Uh, probably not true. So don't use, we never stop using that. We never stop uh, using stretching. I, I don't want to get into why, but that happens to us. Also, the other thing is also true. That is in some instance, we know that the exercise has a far better effect on reduction of pain and uh, disability in many, many conditions, starting from OANE to LBA. But we will, uh, we are hardly using it. Uh, again, I don't want to get into it. But one of the reasons is we don't understand uh, uh, this part of it. That is how this, uh, what will happen if I do exercise? What are the mediating factors which decreases pain and disability? We don't know that. And whenever I ask physiotherapists, they keep on telling me they, they have a, a, the opposite of what will happen. A lot of people are uh, telling us that if you give exercise in acute, the pain will increase. That is, they think that the mediating factor is increasing rather than decreasing. So they don't understand the mediating factor. So they sort of tend not to use it even when we know a better cause and effect. And uh, many times we may not know the cause of a lot of conditions starting from diabetes to OAME. We may not know what causes diabetes. We may not know what causes Parkinson's or what causes uh, low back pain. All these things we may not know the uh, causal agent, but we can still have a better treatment because we know some of the mediating factors, how it causes the effect especially exercise. We know what will happen if you give exercise. So sometimes we don't need to know, understand what causes the disease as such, but because we know the cause and effect of the exercise or cause and effect of the dopamine uh, producing levodopa and things like that, we can have those kind of treatment also. So uh, one of the uh, greatest philosophers of our time is Thiruvalluvar, and I think that Thiruvalluvar was uh, right and I mean, wrong in this when he said that uh, you have to understand the cause of the disease and treat like that. It is not true and it cannot happen in our lifetime because there are hundreds and hundreds of complexities and, co uh, and contextual factors which will never allow us to understand those things clearly, at least for the next 100 years. So those are the... Uh, those are the factors I think you need to keep in mind before uh, thinking that uh, this will this treatment will cause this effect. This assessment will make me understand this is what caused uh, this condition. All these things, uh, if you you want to keep in mind when you are uh, practicing physiotherapy. Uh, thank you so much. So if you have any questions, this is the uh, time for us to uh, do the discussion. Prakash? Ah, yes. Uh, those who are interested to ask question, you can unmute and ask, or you can type in the chat box. Prakash, you want to start something? And 
How do you? Hello, uh, yeah. Yes, please yes. go. Um, uh, can you uh, please explain how ideal it should be? For example, let us take the example of uh, posture and pain, and um, to have a uh, cause effect relationship. If I am going and searching for the literature, whatever it is available, what are all the things ideally? Okay. Check your cut off at the end. I think I think we can answer okay. the question. Now. Right. Hello. Uh, yes. Yes. Check. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, sir. If at all, if I am going and checking for any evidences, we are what we are getting is like only whether the posture correction exercises had worked or not, whether it is only kind of uh, it has been considering the considering there isn't cause effect cause and effect relationship. If at all, I have to go for it. What kind of like longitudinal studies or what what I have to exactly check for to determine whether the cause and effect has already been established or not? Can yeah, you Prakash. explain this with the example of posture and pain? Akash, can you start then? <laughs> yeah. uh, can you quickly repeat the question? Uh, if at all, I have to determine whether mm. uh, the posture and pain right. has cause and effect, what kind of... Uh, right, right. Evidence? Got it. Yeah, we sir. we need to basically look at uh, the five mm. different criteria which uh, he has uh, shown. Say, for example, okay. temporality, right? That is, mm. a cause should have happened, should have occurred before the effect, right? So that says that uh, we should only look at longitudinal study. One of mm -hmm. the, I'm just giving one of the criteria. Only the longitudinal study can establish mm. that a cause occurred mm. first. So if there is a, a cross-sectional study or a case study or whatever uh, other things, it cannot establish mm. it, right? Mm. Similarly, if you uh, look at uh, other uh, aspects, say, for example, dose-response relationship. So it should also have mm. a lesser, the, I mean, uh, a mild uh, condition should cause mild symptoms or a severe mm. condition should cause severe symptoms. Hmm. So, and also it should have yeah. the uh, negative correlation also should be there, right? Yes, yes. Right. So hmm. the thing is, we that is why uh, studies, uh, we should not take a single study at a face value. I mean, we can't decide based upon a single study. See, hmm. most of the research begins with, let us say, a new cause has been proposed for a effect. Hmm. Let us say this, uh, uh, this credit card wallet or syndrome or something which leads to right so hmm. we don't have to start with a longitudinal study in the beginning when some uh, uh, assumptions were made first we could possibly hmm. establish whether is there any relationship at all that's why cross sectional studies are required if in the initial study hmm. itself if there is no uh, even uh, a possibility possibility of something from happening then we don't have hmm. to go with everything else Basically, I'm saying it mm. is a sort of step-by-step -step process, this all mm. criteria. So that mm. is how it goes. Eventually, when uh, you have sufficient reasons to believe that there is a temporality, mm. there is a dose-response relationship, that is the uh, mm. greater the uh, amount of cause, greater exposure to cause also leads to greater ex uh, effect. You know? When mm. these factors were established, then we can come. And the last point, what he has mentioned, is about uh, repetition or replication. That means even if a single yeah. RCT shows that there is an effect, that will not become a final evidence. So you need more yeah. RCTs done. That uh, That's where if you uh, say, for example, the forest plot is basically a visual representation of how replication has uh, led to a final impact. Yeah. I, I also want to add only one thing to this, uh, which uh, most of us leave out in physiotherapy. Uh, what is the hypothesis you are making when we say that this is a bad posture and how is that, what is it doing to my pain, right? Is it 
or no. we thinking that if I have bad posture, the nerve will be pressed or some muscle will be pressed and that will lead to back pain or something like that. That first step of hypothesizing that this causes this is, is either uh, sometimes very childish or uh, it doesn't hold water. It doesn't look uh, uh, biologically possible to start with. And uh, I just want to point out another example of how this whole idea of cause effect was not even considered is the kinesiologic taping. And there are so much of studies that, right? The first point is the, how this has come. The, the somebody used the tape and somebody is playing well. And you have lots of uh, high performing athletes are having the tape and they're winning it. So it is an uh, easy assumption of course wrong assumption to believe that the that they are having the tape is what has led to the uh, their performance so if if something like this comes we shouldn't be doing so many studies first we need to first thing what is the plausibility that is from cause to effect that mediator that is the mechanism by which cause can lead to effect that needs to be analyzed right even if you want to uh, go for the next one the counterfactual uh, what he has suggested is so you should have a one group who are having it or one group who doesn't have it if both are performing more or less well then that cause is actually not causing an effect right so that's why the control group and all other ideas are coming so the simplest way is to think of counterfactual what if this cause doesn't exist what will happen will the effect will still be produced same goes for poor posture argument right so let us say that what happens if people uh, who uh, had poor posture and did not develop a pain clinically what we see is we only see patients who developed pain so it is so easy for us to uh, connect everything because the effect has already is there but there there may be a lot of people who have poor posture but did not come to a uh, clinic if that is true if there is data to suggest that then that cause is not uh, leading to effect, right? So uh, you, the MRI you, example sir. is also the same thing. We are taking MRI of people who already developed an effect, right? So when studies are done, when they have taken MRI of people who did not develop a uh, report pain, it shows that they also have it, right? So clinically, we have... Uh, we can say advantage or disadvantage of seeing only people who have developed uh, an effect and it's it somehow uh, very uh, easy for us to attribute whatever that uh, abnormality is there to attribute that as an effect. Okay. Uh, so somebody asked, uh, how will I find the cause and effect uh, right steps? Uh, as I told you, uh, as we have been discussing, we have to look into the five steps which we have talked and uh, start with uh, simple hypotheses, uh, some case control study, then go into interventional study. If the intervention study is not saying that uh, whatever cause you have identified and you have put an intervention to that and it did not change, uh, then it is not, uh, uh, it's not, either the uh, treatment is bad or the cause and effect is not there. So you, that is how you want to find out. Uh, Alapan, can you do you want to? Sir, I'm an audible, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, so, how do you find the cause if we couldn't be able to uh, uh, detect the cause with the patient, sir? Let's say idiopathic uh, or the cause could be the multifactorial one. How do you identify? How, how to identify that, sir? Uh, Prakash, you want to... Uh, yeah, right. See, uh, for this, I, I think you need to connect it to uh, what in the presentation where it's pointed out that to treat a patient, we don't always have to know the uh, cause. What? Secondly, when it is uh, multifactorial, the, it doesn't mean that uh, we can't manage it. We just need a different kinds of management. Multifactorial means our intervention also has to be multidimensional, yeah. addressing multiple causes. Right. Say, for example, if, if a low back pain uh, patient's perception, assumption also contributes to their 
uh, pain perception. We can't simply say I'll give only exercise, manual therapy and so on. So it needs to have some sort of education component and some other aspects of uh, treatment should be there. And about idiopathic. Now, idiopathic is if we really don't know what to do. Our, uh, I mean, what is the cause? It's, it's our line of management. We shouldn't overthink it. We have, uh, say, for example, if you have uh, uh, having Bell's palsy, which is idiopathic, right? That means that we cannot address the underlying cause. What possibly we could do is we could learn about the pathophysiology, what is actually happening, and we will have to think of an intervention that might intervene at the mechanism level or would possibly uh, reduce or minimize its impact getting worse. Say, for example, the Parkinson's disease that we manage, we don't really have a cause. So we, the point is knowing or not knowing the cause is not a problem. If we are falsely assuming that we know the cause, that is where right. most problem comes. We, we can manage knowing that we don't really know the cause. In, in non-specific low back pain, that's if we can manage them without. But if you falsely assume that a particular posture or a muscle weakness is causing, that is where it deals to a bigger problem. Uh, one of the reasons is because if you think that the muscle weakness is the problem, you will only treat that, that leading to uh, either a poor outcome or uh, completely uh, a scientific way of uh, going forward. And also not knowing that I don't know is important for uh, science to get better. That is one of the reasons why physiotherapy has not gone up uh, in the last uh, 100 years. It has not moved an inch because we all come up with an idea and we think that we know, whether it is the double cross syndrome or the uh, distorting the fascia or anything like that. Say for example, in the video I showed, when, I, when you see that a man is pushing the train, we know that that cannot happen. But, but if I ask you, can I pull a fascia or pull a muscle or what I mean by you, stretching a muscle, we really don't know whether that can happen or not, but we all think that it can happen. This is the problem. We, we know the, uh, uh, that it can happen. That is what is uh, sort of stopping us all. So. Sheikh, answer to your question, it's not that simple, uh, but we, I think we should have this on a personal conversation because it really requires a lengthier explanation for why it doesn't work like that. About your okay. correlation values. Yes, sir. Yeah. Prakash, can I um, say something about Yes, it? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Uh, from a clinician point of view, um, I think it's fine. Um, I would want to add upon uh, for Mr. Alagapan's question on that uh, complex process. And as Hari Umza would always say that there are actually two approaches. One is uh, uh, try to understand the uh, complex mechanism as far as possible uh, before attempting to solve the problem. And if that doesn't work out, then uh, try solving the problem again and again. And in due course, we start understanding which methods might actually solve the problem. For example, CIMT, uh, when it began, they said, they hypothesized that the, there were many factors which might influence the effect, uh, and they formulated the principles. And then uh, in due course, they tried attempting to replicate it again and again. And what they found was the actual basic idea of constraint was not the primary thing which was influencing the outcome but the practice was influencing the outcome. So they, when they keep on trying again and again, it came out. So from a research point of view, I think there are these two uh, methods of solving the problem. And I would like to hear Sir's comments on this. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Your connection was breaking. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I didn't hear it properly, but uh, now uh, I completely agree that there needs to be uh, uh, whenever we are uh, having an effect. Uh, this is not happening. Uh, that is how we have gone better, I think. Uh, say, for example, uh, we start with saying that excess is uh, better in LBA, but it can get better. Then you find out other factors and uh, other influencing and mediating factors or co-founders or all the other things, and then incorporate it into uh, making the uh, effect better. So you need a, a better hypothesis to uh, say why this is happening, why this is not happening, uh, and things like that, right? Right, um, is there any other questions? Sir, uh, Silva here. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, so most of this correlation studies um, are done. Uh, one in a research point of view, it's very easy to do uh, compared with the randomized control trials. Uh, so, but what we need to have is, is there any uh, theory or a strong um, uh, pathophysiological background or a strong foundation for that assumption or for the conclusion. So, but most of the time we lack in physiotherapy uh, research, like we are not able to access to um, very sophisticated uh, research and like uh, medical uh, research where there's a lot of funding happening in all uh, level of research can happen. Uh, this much amount of um, uh, robust uh, you know, research uh, when it is not possible in physiotherapy. So can we ban correlation studies in physiotherapy at least? I don't think anybody can publish now correlation studies in a, uh, any journal. I don't okay. think they... Uh, Prakash, I'm right, right? Uh, uh, you can, uh, depending but upon who publishes it. <laughs> journal. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, the, and, and the correlation becomes uh, one of the earlier studies yeah. you know, right. to direct uh, hypothesis, right? right? And also, there should be a lot of studies about association between, say, for example, uh, uh, a lot of cognitive cognitive factors and, uh, uh, say, low back pain or uh, post stroke rehab mm. and all those things uh, can be valuable, I suppose, but. Uh, sadly, sometimes it starts uh, starts good, and then uh, the next uh, steps are not uh, uh, happening. I think the evolution from the association then to uh, a robust hypothesis of whether that association leads to better intervention, whether that intervention leads to better outcomes. Uh, that 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 train of uh, things are not happening. I think. Uh, we are more impatient, no, sir. We yeah. greatly <laughs> jump from correlation to RCT and then try to solve the problem. No, the, the thing is, if we if we are driven by wanting to understand the problem and solve the problem, right. uh, our research will get better. Now we are driven yes. by wanting to do research. <laughs> uh, that is the reason we want to do some research. Right, we don't care if the if the problem really we how well we understand problem and a lot of questions we don't even consider. Yeah, that deep level of uh, thing we we have to do one has to do our um, teaching or whatever the infrastructure facility has to be strengthened. Like uh, whatever available with that, I think it's difficult. Uh, I, I hope I am what I conveyed. One thing I understand, like Vasindansa says that correlation also a, can be a starting point that only at that level, it's fine, a starting point. So it means there's a lot of work needs to be done before we make a conclusion. Is that right, sir? I, I, I suppose because uh, 
causal effect starts with uh, understanding correlation. There is no question about it. Um, but in the last 20 years, we, we, we have a better understanding of uh, correlating factors, but uh, we have poor understanding of uh, uh, whether that correlation is a uh, causal relation or it's a complicated relation or uh, how it works. Uh, we are still struggling, I think, uh, to come up uh, with uh, the value out of that correlation. Uh, yes. And also, uh, we needed to go uh, beyond simple correlation. At least yeah. the next step is to look at multivariable yeah. uh, regressions. That is what uh, uh, we should be the next uh, default. We should not be doing simple correlation of taking two variable and correlate it. And yes. at least do a multivariable correlation, look for confounding and so on and so forth. And as far as infrastructure is concerned, infrastructure is a problem. but the uh, cause of the current problem, at least in Indian infrastructure research, infrastructure is not a primary problem. The primary problem is uh, that we don't, we are, uh, our need intentions Attitude. and motivations for doing research. That is mm. where primary problem lies. Okay, anyway, right. we'll not get into research part of it, right? because a lot of people are not uh, doing that. And uh, the next question, uh, if the it is not correlated, what to do? Throw it out. That's all. What else can be done? If it is not correlated, that means that uh, your assumption is wrong. There is nothing else to do after that. Uh, <clears throat> because we can find correlation with uh, anything and everything. That's the easiest thing to do. And uh, we are uh, programmed evolutionarily to find correlation. So, uh, and also our evolutionary biology does not uh, care about. Uh, 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 false positive and false negative because uh, ours is about survival. So if uh, you are finding any negative correlation or if it is not correlated or something is happening, that means that your assumption is uh, wrong. And that is a uh, very, very common from physics to biology. So nothing to worry. Uh, for Satyaraja, uh, the, the point is not that correlation is uh, doesn't have a value, correlation study. The point is misuse of correlation study is the issue, uh, not the, uh, not, I mean, correlation per se is not a, a anything wrong. Right. And also, I, I just want to, uh, before we finishing, I'll just uh, throw these things uh, together so that we can have an understanding. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, if you take this, as I told you, you are seeing the, uh, you are describing uh, the triangle, uh, you're not trying to find the cause of it. Now, if you want to say this is true, uh, the first plausibility of one muscle working less and another muscle working less more, uh, you just have to understand can the brain think like that? Uh, can the brain think that one muscle is more important, one muscle is less important? If it thinks like that, why is it thinking like that? You want to ask these questions before thinking that there is an upper caste syndrome or a lower caste syndrome, right? And also a lot of studies have, can you find that this muscle is weaker than this muscle, uh, the next muscle? Is the abdominal weaker than whose muscle? The abdomen is weak. How do you quantify weakness in a person? I really don't understand any of those things. Uh, at the last point of it, uh, do they make, uh, does it make, if you strengthen these muscles, do they get better? Again, you want to go and read about whether it gets better. You can also try it once in your clinic also. Uh, if you have, if you are diagnosing somebody with uh, upper cross syndrome or lower cross syndrome, do a counterfactual, do a IFT and see whether what happens to them or do some other exercise and see what happens to them. Then you can have a better understanding for yourself. Uh, that is the tr uh, same in case of all these things. Uh, as I told you, a lot of hundreds of people are there without any of these changes. Uh, how does it uh, get into your thinking of uh, medicine as such? So uh, those are the points we want to emphasize before closing. Vasant, do you want to say something before we leave? No, sir, I think it's uh, fine. Mm. Um, um, only thing is most of us are 
most of the questions were directed towards so what should be done next what type <laughs> of uh, study or what kind of things should be done next and i think uh, slightly we are at a very early point of time to still especially when it is a uh, complex uh, right. multiple factors yeah. are involved in it uh, whether we can just uh, follow correlation with the next step and then go ahead with that and uh, that was one of the problems with even the upper limb contextual factors when we are looking into it uh, the results yeah. did not come um much uh, bring much change but then we thought there could be a number of factors so maybe some more time should be spent in uh, understanding the factors that's what i would like to add sir yeah i think uh, the context and the uh, and the complexity is uh, what we are missing i think in uh, uh, medicine research we need to focus more on that prakash you want to finish it off yeah uh, nothing more to add okay so just uh, the last word as i uh, wanted to just uh, give a slightly uh, final turning to what person said uh, because the complexity of biology and the uh, contextual factors which we deal in biology uh, makes uh, cause and effect far more complex than what our books and our experts are leading us to tell so have an open mind uh, inquire yourself and uh, read more to understand those things and uh, have a better treatment thank you okay so that's all everyone in case if you had questions later uh, or uh, you can email us and also I'll encourage all of you to you know explore your own cause effect uh, when you are practicing just start thinking i, I think it would be a good uh, beginning um, hope we'll meet again in uh, future webinars okay. bye 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 bye